Let's talk here about a movie that should absolutely happen. And the director says that it could happen. But the reality says absolutely otherwise. And that is just, well, it's unfortunate. And that's all about Tron 3. Now, if you're like me, and I think you are because you're, you're listening to this, you love Tron Legacy. That movie is great. Yes, it is an excellent, epic Daft Punk album, and that does play up heavily into the awesomeness of that movie. Make no mistake, I'm not going to argue against that. However, that's not the only factor of that film that is cool. The movie itself is really cool. So anyway, uh, Tron Legacy director Joseph Kaczynski says that the long-delayed Tron 3 could still happen at Disney, and he suspects it will all come down to timing. Yeah, like everything in life, it pretty much comes down to timing. But when you're talking about a, you know, a hundred seventy million dollar movie, which is what Tron Legacy was, that was a budget. Uh, you know, there's a lot more at play there. However, where we find ourselves right now with Disney and what's going on with everything, it could. It, I will talk about that, but it's, there's some interesting stuff there. So uh, it says here that uh, he says that it's going to happen. Um, you know. He says, what is it? Uh, in the months leading up to the legacy theatrical release in December 2010 with co-writers Edward Kitsis and a Adam Horowitz developing a story meant to round out the overarching Tron narrative into a proper trilogy. Unfortunately, legacy ultimately found itself in the awkward position of being a financial success, but only just so. And that is true. Uh, but here's the thing. The guys Edward Kitsis and Adam Horowitz came from Lost, and they also did Once Upon a Time for what, seven seasons on ABC? So, like, those dudes, they can craft a world, and I would have liked to have seen what they did. I, I loved, um, I really did love Tron 3. So, let's see here what uh, what uh, he's saying about this, because I want to know. Now, speaking to Comic Book in a recent interview, Kaczynski said that there's always been an interest since Legacy for a sequel. There's always been talk and murmuring of doing another and continuing the story. He went on to point out that Tron has continued to be part of the Disney brand since Legacy came out 10 years ago. Almost notably, the Tron Light Cycle Power Run, which premiered in Shanghai Disneyland in 2016. As Kaczynski sees it, like everything, it just needs to have the right confluence of, well, it's all about timing and the right elements and everything's got to come together for a movie to happen. Now, that seems like woefully optimistic, you know, just like, okay, like, you know, or just, you know, maybe <sighs> naively optimistic, you know, but it, he does have a point. He does... Uh, he does have a point. Now he says here, I don't ever uh, see Tron being something where you pump one out every two years. You just can't. That'd be too hard to make. It's got to be a passion project and it's got to be really reaching for something different and innovative and ambitious because that's the DNA of it. And that's true. It absolutely does. Tron is such an interesting franchise. I love the original. I adore Legacy. I want to see a third film. So let's look at whether or not this might actually happen, because we need to look at the data to kind of figure it out. Now, uh, it does say here that, uh, you know, Tron, this is a box office uh, mojo. Uh, it says that it did have a budget of one hundred and seventy million dollars, but and it had a domestic gross of one hundred seventy two million dollars, which look wasn't bad for Christmas time. Twenty ten. That's when it came out right before Christmas and had a worldwide total of just over four hundred million. So, look, did it make back three times its production budget for that rumored estimate? The answer to that is no, it didn't. So it might have just been a success, but maybe only in places like China, which is why that's where they opened the, the light cycle ride. But you've also got the Rotten Tomatoes score, which, trust me, wasn't much better saying here with a 51 percent Rotten score. And I don't I think that's total crap, by the way. I don't I don't buy that. I don't believe that. I'm not I don't, I don't support that one damn bit. Uh, it says here, Tron Legacy boasts dazzling visuals, but its human characters and story gets lost amidst the state-of-the-art production design. Whatever, man. I think Jeff Bridges rocked it out of the park. I think Olivia Wilde was great as Korra. And uh, I really, really, really loved what they did with that movie. But they do have a point when it comes to timing. So let's talk about the timing. Let's talk about why Kaczynski's making that comment now. Well, for one, he's hoping to get the movie off the ground. He's hoping that they're going to be able to get it greenlit. Uh, and what he's with the biggest thing for that for him right now is Top Gun. That's why if Top Gun can pull in a lot of money and we're talking a, a metric like F ton of money, that is going to do well for him. And if that does well for him, then that's going to do well for, quite frankly, everybody else. 
So, uh, in, especially in trying to get that particular project off the ground. The reason why that's important is because that's the first movie he's directed since 2013's Oblivion. Now, Oblivion was a personal project for him because he had originally written the graphic novel that the movie, the script was based on. But if even though it had Tom Cruise and Morgan Freeman and the movie was actually really effing good, it still failed to make a lot of money. Him coming back in now to do Top Gun Maverick and to do it with Tom Cruise as a sequel to uh, one of, you know, one of the late 80s biggest and, and best movies, uh, it almost feels like a surefire hit. And the fact that it's been moved from June until December uh, might actually benefit the movie because people, I think, at that point in time are going to really want something that is going to be truly heart pounding and crazy and over the top and, and seeing it in IMAX is going to be pretty wild. So he is waiting for the combination of Tom Cruise, Top Gun and him to put his name back on the map in order to get it off the ground. And I and I say this because Neil Blomkamp kind of did something similar when he was promoting Chappie in 2015. He was talking about Alien 5 and the idea that he pitched to Sigourney Weaver and that she was on board with. And that overtook all the conversation surrounding the release of Chappie, so much so that Fox was actually interested in wanting to pursue Alien 5 with Neil Blomkamp, but Ridley Scott came in and uh, castrated him in order to do, you know, Covenant. So uh, there's that. But still, it's like it gets the conversation going. It puts people talking about it. And if there could be a big release the Tron 3 cut movement like there is the Snyder cut, people, you know, they're, they're so, you know, someone at Disney uh, might, you know, like Iger, and Alan Horn might take might take notice of that. But therein lies the problem. Therein lies the problem looking at the current situation. As much as Kaczynski wants her to be a Tron 3, I don't see it happening. Uh, and he talks about timing. I'm looking at it from financials. $170 million for a Tron movie uh, is definitely going to be something that is not what they're going to get for another film. They're not going to get $170 million to do it. But what they could do, and this is just my own theory is use the stagecraft technology from the Mandalorian to do Tron. I think it makes the most amount of sense considering that it's going to be all CG. This would give it a real earthy feel for being a CG film, right? So remember how like they did the first Tron movie where they had every one of the costumes and they shot them against the blue screen. This is the same thing, but using uh, the stagecraft tech, which kind of creates a full 360 degree uh, set that they can then play in. And I think that technology already haven't been created, getting ILM to design it. You can keep costs down, and this could be a perfect way of keeping costs down. Now, granted, certain things are going to need bigger sets and so on and so forth, uh, cause we saw uh, quite a bit of that with Tron legacy, but that's how they could do it. Now this again, therein lies the, the problem is the money and Bob Iger. Iger just had to come back into play. Iger just had to step back in to everything in order to, you know, repair the company he spent 15 years building up to repair uh, his legacy, so to speak. And so right now he's, he's not going to be talking about a $170 million movie uh, on, on a, you know, on a property that for the most part, isn't as beloved as it once was, or at least isn't as profitable as it once was. Uh, but you know, he knows he might be saying like, look, if there's enough stink, if enough Tron fans petition Disney, and I mean like a, a lot of Tron fans, okay? I don't mean just like your normal like eight dudes hanging out in a Discord server like, let's get this trending. I mean, we got to have a significant amount of worldwide backing in order to get everyone on board again. Now, here's how they have to do it is they have to like, you know, they have to generate a lot of buzz. And this story could generate a lot of buzz. A lot of people could be talking about it. But in the reality of it, to me at least, is that this is something that's going to take a lot of effort. You you need a lot of people that are going to be talking about this, tweeting about this and tagging Bob Iger because he apparently pays the hell attention. And that's cool. And I think if they're looking, he's, he's got to think of ways to keep Disney plus active. You can't push Tron three for theatrical release. It's not going to work. This is not going to work. But if you want to push Tron for a Disney plus television show, like a limited run show that would then round out the trilogy and give us a, a proper conclusion to the story, you would have a better luck probably getting that off the ground than going for a film. I'm telling you, that's the best way to do it. I don't know how to do it. I'm not the person to lead this revolt, so to speak. Um, but uh, that is how you get their attention. You have to organize and you have to keep pushing 
and you have to keep going. And you remember, you got to fight for the user, right? You got to fight for the user. So, uh, yeah, obviously I, I'm behind it hundred percent. If anything pops up that I could help out with, I let me know and I will do my best to amplify it. I would love to see another Tron movie to round out the story and to see where things go, because, uh, I still have my, my copy of Tron legacy on Blu-ray and I still freaking love it. And now I kind of want to go pop on Disney plus and watch Tron legacy again. If anything, just because it's got that kick-ass soundtrack, my God, it's so good. It's so good. So good. It's it's butter. It's so good. It's like butter. <laughs>